Hello everybody and welcome back to another Marvel Crisis Protocol video and today we're going to actually be steering a little bit different from the types of videos we normally make and we're going to be talking about the newly released timeline events rule set. So yeah, first of all we're going to, we're going to go ahead, we're going to break down what this actually is, whether or not you should care about it as a player, and then we'll go ahead and we'll get into some of the specifics like the list that they posted for the different characters that are going to be legal in this in this format uh and then at the end I'll, I'll give my thoughts on it but i'm going to try not to kind of clutter the the beginning of this video at least the first half with my personal opinions on it because i'd like to keep this as objective as possible but if you care i'll be talking about some of that at the end as well so first of all what are timeline events Timeline events are a new kind of format introduced by Atomic Mass Games that are designed uh, to be the, the way to play for uh, competitive, multi-day, large events. So these are going to be, you know, your, your major convention events and things like that. Uh, each timeline is supposed to be a snapshot of the universe that's going to severely restrict the cards and characters available to you so basically you're going to be forced to use kind of less meta teams uh and find new and new and different types of types of strategies and things like that which in concept actually sounds really really cool um you know it's going to force you to basically not always rely on these handful of models that you've always had access to before and they're slimming down all of the affiliations that are actually playable in this event which is kind of cool so, um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get right into it. So, first of all, we'll look at the rules packet here. It's only five pages, so it's not super long here. And it's got some of the same introductory things there. And it's basically just, you know, all the basic responsibilities and stuff that most of us don't care about. Um, but there's an interesting catch to it here, is that you're actually going to be building three rosters in the timeline event. You're going to be creating three lists and then throughout the game or, or over the course of the event it, you're basically going to have specific ones that you're going to be using in specific cases so um you know round timing and, and stuff like that we don't care too too much about that but i believe somewhere in here yeah here it is basically based on the round that you're in is going to be which roster you're using whether it's your first second or third roster um so that's really really interesting you need to build three rosters that are going to be um you know used in separate specific games you're also not able to kind of list chickens so you're not gonna you know look at your opponent's three rosters look at yours and, and pick which one no it's in this round you play this roster so everyone's going to be using the same kind of numbered roster and yeah so it's going to be it's going to be really interesting in that. And then, of course, these rosters, all three of them have to be made using the 2024 timeline, which we'll go ahead and we'll look at in a second. But also, somewhere on here, I'm going to see if I can find it, it's going to talk about some of the restrictions for actually building your list, uh, which is, here it is, however, timeline lists may not contain any duplicate characters, tactics cards, crisis cards, or infinity gems. So that is a big deal. That means across your three lists, you are going to have 30 unique characters, 30 unique tactics cards, uh, 18 crisis cards, 9 extracts and 9 secures, and um, however many infinity gems you feel like, but you can't have the same one in multiple lists, which won't be a problem because as far as I can tell, almost none, if not any of the gem bearers are actually legal in this mode. So yeah it's super super um forcing you to really really make some unique lists out here i mean going into tactics cards stuff like brace for impact patch up aren't going to be playable in all of your lists sort of thing i mean specifically brace i think is the one that kind of like pretty much everyone runs brace so it's going to be really really interesting to see what kind of rosters we might get out of this where that's just not legal in two of your three lists because you're only allowed one of them Similarly, crises cards. I mean, that's that's nine different crises cards. It means all three of your rosters probably want to be playing very different crises from each other because you're not allowed to overlap them. So nine extracts, nine secures. That's gonna be that's gonna be a lot. So really, really interesting restriction here um, to to kind of make you build three completely separate lists that have absolutely no overlap i mean when i first heard about this and I, I heard no overlap characters i was like okay that's that's kind of cool 
Um, but seeing that it's tactics cards and crises cards as well, that is extremely restrictive. You're going to have to be forced to, to really bring some, some deep cut cards, maybe a lot more character cards, that sort of thing. So yeah, I mean, there's not much more to go on here. The rest of it's kind of your, your standard stuff, you know, margin of error, sportsmanship and stuff like that. How the pairings work, which for the most part, unless you're a tournament organizer, you probably don't care too much about. And I think that's another thing to really note here is that this isn't the standard events, you know, your your local tournaments and, and your, you know, even larger kind of more more local events, like like most of the ones that I do for my tournament recaps and things like that, will not be following this this timeline event rules. This is specifically for the huge multi-day events. And um yeah, so if you don't go to those events or 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 you know you don't have interest in those those types of huge competitive events then you probably don't care that much about pretty much any of this. But if you do go to those types of events, or you're planning to go to those types of events in the future, this is the format that's going to be enforced at the, at least the official ones, and, and we'll see how well it's adopted by the the communities that run these events outside of uh, the, the official ones. But um, this is going to be a really interesting one, because, I mean... This this is a lot harder to do for a lot of people, and we'll get into the character list in a minute, but there's going to be, I mean, first of all, you now require 30 models just to play, right? So having that having that restriction right away means, and obviously this is for the bigger events, and most of the people going to the bigger events will, will tend to kind of already have amassed quite a collection. There's very few of us in this game who play this at, at that kind of level where we're going to these major events um who don't have 30 models by now it just kind of happens but it also means you can't you know you you're you're going to be building in a much more restricted way uh and you're going to be building using a lot of models that you might not be as comfortable with and because you have to do three distinct things you know on one hand and when this first first released uh, and we'll, we'll get into why this won't work in a minute but when I first heard this and, and, you know, I was thinking, well, you know, I could actually build three Avengers rosters. There's three different leaderships, so that could work. Um, and while that's partially true, we'll get into the characters list and you'll see that they've actually restricted that down a lot. So you're also going to be kind of forced into playing other affiliations. So if you're kind of mainly, you know, you mainly play one or two affiliations, well, you're going to have to learn another one to, to kind of be able to play in these events at a, at a competitive level. Um, so that's going to be really interesting. I think it's, in some ways, that's a good thing. I think that's going to force people to kind of broaden their, the broaden their scope of what types of lists they play. Uh, it's also going to, again, avoid some of those, those really specific meta picks, but it's definitely going to be a little bit restrictive and it's going to make it a lot harder for people to play these types of events. So I think there's some give and take there and, and you can form your own opinions about that, of course, and, and decide. I, I'd love to hear what you guys think about the, the format overall in the comments below and, and whether you think this is going to be something that's positive for the game or, or you know, something that you're, you're actively going to try and avoid sort of thing. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into actually looking at the timeline list that they've created. So the 2024 timeline, I've got it open up here and... First thing I'm going to say before we get into this is you're going to note immediately that there is a handful of affiliations that are just not included on this list, meaning none of their models are legal. And that, I think, is a very interesting choice. Um, we'll, we'll get into it again more towards the end when I kind of go over my personal opinions on this, but... Um, yeah, there there are some affiliations you just can't play, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into it, and we'll start by looking at some of the ones you can play. So first of all, we have A-Force here. A-Force is allowed She-Hulk, because she's their leader, of course. Black Cat, Captain Marvel Cosmic Avenger, so new new Captain Marvel. Domino, Okoye, Shuri, Spider-Woman, and the Black Widow, which notably is the fourth rep version. So way trimmed down from what you're, what you're used to on the regular A-Force list here. I and mean, this is what, eight models? Yeah eight models in A-Force, which is usually a pretty huge roster. Then we'll go into Avengers. Avengers is still one of the biggest rosters here, but you'll notice immediately they only have one leader available to them. It is the new Captain America First Avenger. So no Sam, no no Steve One, no Hulkbuster even. Uh, then going into characters available, they're allowed Beast, Cable, Danvers Cosmic Avenger, Deadpool, Hawkeye, Invincible Iron Man, Iron Fist, King T'Challa, which is the new Black Panther coming out soon. Notably, we didn't have a Black Panther up here. 
Luke Cage, Quicksilver, She-Hulk, Spider-Woman, The Black Widow, War Machine, Winter Soldier Operative, so, so the new one as well. You'll note that, uh, that a lot of the models where there's more than one version of them, it's just giving us the, the newest version. And Wolverine. So actually, contrary to what I just said, that is the original Wolverine, not Logan the Wolverine. Um, so I don't know if Logan's actually in this. I haven't looked through the entire document yet myself, but this is going to be kind of my first time going through it. Next, we have Brotherhood. They're allowed Magneto, Mystique, Colossus, Juggernaut, Pyro, Quicksilver, Sabretooth, Shadow King. So he's going to be Brotherhood, it looks like. The Blob and Toad. That's the other thing, is they've kind of given us some, some sneak peeks into who's going to be in what affiliation. So Shadow King, we know, will be Brotherhood now. And King T'Challa, we know, will be Avengers now. But um, yeah, they've slimmed down them a little bit. I think they're actually one of the ones that kind of made out best here. They still have access to a lot of their pieces and both of their leaders, so, so that's pretty cool for them. Next, we have Cabal. The only Cabal leader they're allowed to bring is Red Skull, Master of the World, although we'll mention that again in a minute. Um, so, so, of course, new Red Skull, but they're not allowed their other leaders. No Malekith here. Uh, they're allowed Zola. They're allowed the new Zemo. They're allowed Strucker. Bob, Agent of Hydra, Crossbones, the new one, Claw, Magneto, Mr. Sinister, Mysterio, Mystique, Omega Red, Sabretooth, Ultron, uh, Metal Tyrant, Viper, and Winter Soldier Operative. So Cabal, another one that, you know, massive list in the regular games. So they get to keep a fairly large list here as well. Um, but still some very notable models missing. I mean, first of all, they're down to one leadership option. Second of all, no Malekith, which I know is kind of saying the same thing, but is also definitely a big deal. Um, I'm sure there's tons of other models missing from this list. I just don't play Cabal that much, so I, I might not have noticed them, but the, this is definitely a slimmed down version of the Cabal list. I mean, no original Zemo even is, is kind of huge. So next we go into Criminal Syndicate. They're allowed two of their leaders. They're allowed to have Claw and uh modok 2 so nobly modok 2 is here no no original modok for for cabal there they're allowed black cat crossbones 2 electra green goblin craven the hunter mbaku mysterio omega red rhino and taskmaster so taskmaster is included here which is kind of cool Next, we have the Defenders. Defenders are allowed Daredevil as their only leadership. So, uh, who's Doctor Strange? Never heard of him. Electra, Hawkeye, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Punisher, and Wolverine. So, super slim down Defenders roster. I mean, I there is a lot of characters they're not including in this one, um, but they do have some of my favorites, such as you know Daredevil, obviously the the new hotness as the leader. Iron Fist and Luke Cage are also always good, and of course Punisher recently added to their roster. Um, another interesting thing I'm noticing here is that a handful of the models included that I kind of would have expected to be out there picks are ones that were recently updated, such as Punisher and Taskmaster above. So that's kind of interesting to note that they've kind of seemed to have put in a lot of the, um, a lot of the characters that were more recently updated, which makes sense. Uh, going into Hydra, uh, here we have Baron Zemo, again, the new one and Baron Strucker. So those are both allowed as leaders. Uh, no Red Skull 2, notably here. Uh, obviously, he was also missing from the Cabal list. Bob, Agent of Hydra, Crossbones, Modok 2, Red Skull 3, Sin, which is really interesting to see her show up on the Hydra list, because Splashing is still 100% allowed here, so you're still allowed to run her in other affiliations. But she's a Cabal leader, and she didn't show up here, so that's probably something they just, you know, she, they forgot to include her here, or she's not supposed to be on this list. Not 100% sure on that yet. I don't think we have an official answer. Uh, at the time of recording, this list has only really been up for a few hours. Uh, maybe by the time this is getting posted, which will be the Saturday morning, uh, maybe maybe we'll have received some official word on, on what's up with that by then. But either way, an interesting inclusion. Spider-Woman, Taskmaster, Viper, and Winter Soldier 2. Going over to the other side here, we have Sentinels. Sentinels have Sentinel Prime Mark IV, Cassandra Nova, and Sentinel Mark IV. So Sentinels do get their entire affiliation, so yay for them. Um, but obviously their affiliation is kind of, kind of lacking some length there. So, uh, we'll see, we'll see. Maybe in this more restrictive format, they'll be a little bit better because very notably stuff like Avengers is missing Hulk, but they do have She-Hulk still. So, uh, they still have one of their, one of their main answers to Sentinels there. Next, we go into S.H.I.E.L.D., which has a really interesting roster here. Um, so they have Invincible Iron Man, Captain America, First Avenger, Hawkeye, She-Hulk, Spectacular Spider-Man, Spider-Woman, Taskmaster, The Black Widow, War Machine, and Winter Soldier Operative. 
So notably here, this is actually very similar to a roster I've been playing around with lately called um, Avengers, but it's actually S.H.I.E.L.D. because pretty much all of these characters are, are Avengers characters as well. And notably, neither of the Furies are allowed here. Fury Senior and Junior are both not a part of this roster. So again, really being restrictive on some of the leaders here. Next, we go into Spider Foes. They get both of theirs. They get Green Goblin and Doc Ock Sinister Scientist. Obviously, no original Doc Ock here. They have access to Craven, Carnage. I don't know why I said those in reverse order. Lizard, Mysterio, Rhino, and Venom. So... They, I think, have been slimmed down a little bit, but I'm actually struggling to figure out in my head who's missing from this roster. I know, obviously, Green Goblin 1 is. Uh, I'm sure others are, but, um, yeah, they, there's pretty much everyone's been cut down in some way. So, yeah, for whatever reason, it's not coming to me right now who else is missing, but probably more missing. Uncanny X-Men is up next here, and they're allowed two leaders, Cyclops and Professor X. Notably, Storm is not allowed on the Uncanny X-Men for this format, which is really, really interesting. They're also allowed Beast, Bishop, Cable, Colossus, Domino, Honey Badger, Iceman, Jean Grey, Nightcrawler, Psylocke, Shadowcat, Wolverine, and X-23. Uh, so, yeah, they've definitely got a bit of a slimmed-down roster there as well. Again, notably, no Logan. Uh, they are allowed Honey Badger, which is which is cool. So they still have three models for for that sort of um, the the Logan family, um, exceptional healing and all that. I'll actually have to check if exceptional healing made the cut here, but um, yeah, so they're they're very much still still a thing, um, but they are missing some of their key pieces, such as Rogue, who was also notably missing from Brotherhood, and uh, Storm, of course, being one of their one of their main leaders. Um, this confirms stuff we pretty much already knew that Shadowcat, Nightcrawler, Iceman, and Professor X are all affiliated, and Professor X is, of course, a leader, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, they're, they're definitely a slim down roster there as well. Going into Wakanda, they're allowed the new Killmonger, the new Black Panther, and M'Baku as their leaders, but notably no original Black Panther or original Killmonger, and they're also allowed Okoye and Shuri. Notably here, not having uh, Storm in, in X-Men also means Wakanda doesn't get her either, so, so they're a very slim down roster here as well. Next, we have the Web Warriors. The only leader allowed for the Web Warriors is Miles Morales. They don't have Amazing Spider-Man here, instead they opted for Spectacular Spider-Man. They have Black Cat, Daredevil, Spider-Woman, and Venom, who are pretty much all models I think at this point we've seen in other affiliations. So also very notably, no Ghost Spider, who is a very important piece for Web Warriors as a faction, so that's going to be interesting for them. Going into Winter Guard, we have Crimson Dynamo, Dark Star, Omega Red, Red Guardian, Ursa Major, Winter Soldier Operative, and I think that's it. Um, so yeah, I don't actually think they are missing anyone here except Two Threat Widow. I think Two Threat Widow is the only model not part of their roster here, so not at not the end of the world, but uh, is an interesting exclusion there. Obviously, that's just because we have the the four threat one in the other affiliations. And then lastly, we have X Force, where we have Cable, Bishop, Colossus, Deadpool, Domino, Honey Badger, Psylocke, Sabretooth, Wolverine, and X Twenty Three. Um, so yeah, that is all of the affiliations. Uh, if you're missing your affiliation, that's because they just don't exist here. So Guardians of the Galaxy, Black Order off the top of my head, um, those, those don't exist here. Emma Frost doesn't exist here, so, so no club. Um, yeah, there's, there's a handful that are just, that are just completely absent here. Uh, Weapon X I'm not seeing, so, so no Weapon X allowed either. Um... Yeah, I, I hope those weren't your main faction because you're not allowed to play them here. Um, so that's that's interesting that they, they chose to just kind of cut some out completely. But uh, yeah, so we'll go on to the next thing. There's tactics cards here. And I'm not going to spend a crazy amount of time on these because honestly, I'm going to forget most of the tactics cards for most of the affiliations anyways. So we're going to run through these really quick and I'll note any uh, exclusions that I notice. Oh, also notably, no convocation. That's That's unfortunate. Uh, so we have A-Force, they're allowed, I believe, all of their cards. A-Force, Assemble, Special Delivery, and Stalwart. Avengers is allowed all of their cards. Brotherhood is allowed Asteroid M and Books of Truth. I think that's all of their cards because um, Magneto's card is Magneto's, I believe, not Brotherhood. Uh, they're allowed, or Cabal is allowed Dark Rain and Dig In, so they're definitely a few shy there. Um, I, I think there's at least a couple, but they might also be character cards that they've been cutting out um, that are that are also Cabal, so I don't remember 100% there. 
Um, but they only have two tactics cards that are affiliated here, which is which is very interesting. Criminal Syndicate, it looks like, got most of their cards. Um, all according to plan, Bounty Hunters, Cruel Tutelage, Cruelty, No Mercy, and Shadow Organization. Hydra has Inevitable Betrayal, Scientific Methods, Sleeper Agent, The High Council, Two More Shall Rise, and World Domination. It's interesting that The High Council technically still works, even though a lot of the models that originally would have been playing it are, are no longer allowed because th th we have other versions of those characters that are allowed. Um, so that's kind of cool. And Two More Shall Rise is also kind of sweet there. Next we have Sentinels. It looks like they got all of their cards as well. Shield, I think, got most of their cards. There might be one or two missing there. I'm not 100% sure. I know they have a handful. Um, but they got most of their cards. But of course, notably, no Nick Fury means no eye in the sky. So that's kind of a big deal. Spider Foes get Neogenic Recombinator and Sinister Traps. I don't know if they had a new card with the new uh, Doc Ock. So assuming that they didn't, um, I, I think this is all of their cards. Uncanny X-Men uh, has has a big deal here because they get so they get Cerebro, Mind Wipe, and Xavier's Dream, the three new cards that they have access to. They also get Children of the Atom and To Me My X-Men, but notably here no first class. So a large part of kind of X-Men's almost identity um, being being lost on them with with the missing of that card. So that's a huge deal for X-Men there. Uh, I know I know Reed is is not happy about that. Reed being the the Co co star for all the battle reports on the channel here, and uh, he plays a lot of X Men, and, and he's not super happy about that one. So, really big deal uh, on X Men not having access to that card. Next, we go into Wakanda, and they have, I believe, all of their cards here, but I'm not 100% familiar, so they might be missing one or two. We go into Web Warriors, they have all webbed up Ant May's Wheat Cakes and Spider Tracker. No web barrier, but that's been banned in standard, anyways, for a long time, so is what it is. And then we go into Winter Guard. They have Sovereign Strike and Winter Rush. I believe that's all of their cards. I could be wrong. X-Force has Cat and Mouse, Dirty Work, Preserve the Dream, and Pretty Sneaky Sis. And um, I'm not super familiar with X-Force's cards, so I don't know if it's one or both of these. But one of these cards is also a new card, so, so we know we're getting something new soon. Uh, we also had confirmed earlier up here that Bishop is, is going to be an X-Force, so uh, as well as X-Men course um so so that's a that's a small little little thing to come but um then we go into the unaffiliated and i'm not going to go through this entire list because this is an incredibly long list but feel free to pause at any point or just come and find the find the page of you know marvel crisis protocol organized play uh if i'm depending how lazy i'm feeling when i upload this tonight i will include a link in the video details but um yeah there there's a bunch here i'm not going to go through all of them um notably i just realized something was jean gray actually included she was okay because i saw the jean card and was like i don't even know if they picked to put jean gray in this one of the ones i wanted to check here and yeah exceptional healing was included so they they do have access to that there and then they mention here at the end no infinity gems are legal in this timeline so that makes sense because nobody who's in this timeline has access to uh wielding any of the infinity gems so Makes sense that they would they would exclude them here, and then lastly we have the restricted list. Um, so obviously if it's not on not on this list of tactics cards, or the restricted list, then it's then it's just not allowed. And as far as I can tell, the restricted list is basically the same as the one that we have for standard timeline. So they're allowed brace, disarm, indom, patch up, and sacrifice. So all those same cards will still be available to you, but really really notably here. There is only five, and you're going to have to pick six, uh, or you'll have up to six available for your roster building because you're going to be building three separate rosters. So that's going to be really interesting. Also, I'm seeing Stark Armory, but I'm kind of curious if Helios... Yeah, Helios Laser did make the cut. So it seems like a lot of the character cards did make the cut. I don't know if there's any notable exclusions. Uh, again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go through and and name every single card here, but you know I see heroes for hire, I see blood red and personal, bear hog even. So there's there's a lot here. Um, I'm not gonna go through the entire list, but I definitely encourage if you are interested in playing this format, if this is something that that you're gonna be playing a lot of, take the time to go through it and maybe make sure all of your favorites are there because that that could be a big deal if they're not. Um, but yeah, so that is. 
that is the 2024 timeline event. I mean, we'll go back here where we get the, the nice, it's a really cool art. I like this a lot, but um, yeah, the, the 2024 timeline is really interesting. So, I mean, kind of going into my personal thoughts on it now, um, now, now that we've gotten the, the facts out of the way here. Personally, I'm a little disappointed by this. I think they went way too heavy handed with with cutting down these affiliations um i acknowledged when this was first kind of being being talked about and, and i'd first heard rumors of this happening um i i actually thought it was a really cool idea to kind of restrict you know there's going to be some models that aren't allowed there's going to be you're going to be forced to make three different lists that are completely unique from each other um i was like okay that's actually really cool because we're not just going to see you know this handful of very very meta models like your beta rays or your cgrs or, or other models like those that are kind of being seen everywhere right now we're not going to see a bunch of those just running the scene because people have to build three separate lists so i was like that's that's kind of cool i i like the idea of that i like the idea of kind of restricting things down taking some of those you know really really influential pieces that are especially the ones big splash places and, and saying they're not allowed in this format um forcing people to build lists outside of the box is something that i'm 100 percent down for and i think is really interesting but i think they went a little too far i think uh you know doing the three separate lists and then taking the affiliations and cutting them down to be this thin taking entire affiliations out of the game like that that hurts that that's kind of i look at this and i'm like well you know, if I wanted to go to this, I could build an Avengers list. It doesn't have like half of the Avengers that I actually enjoy playing. I'm not a huge personal fan of the of the Steve three leadership. Uh, you know, I, I like Carol, I like Cage, and I like Fist. Uh, those are those are models I play a lot and I enjoy. I like Spider Woman, but like the rest of it, I I don't see myself really building a roster of ten here. That's that's models that I'm actually excited to play. Um, so already, like, just in my favorite affiliation, I've already kind of hit a wall of, like, well, I can build something that feels okay, um, but then I then I have to build two more, and, you know, for me, I'm, I'm looking next at something like Web Warriors, probably, for my next one, and Web Warriors, well, I'm slimmed down to six, I can't have Amazing Spider-Man, who I really like, I can't have Gwen, who's such an important piece for them, so I imme immediately I'm running into some, some things there where it's like, you know, I... I, you know forcing me to not play avengers 3 all, all all three of my rosters is is a good thing overall i think that that's healthy to to be able to say you have to play more than one affiliation but now i've got two lists where i'm kind of like okay i'm i i think i can build an okay list out of these options and then you know going into the third i don't even know what i'd pick for the third um maybe defenders but again like half of my half of my choices for defenders are gone no hulks no no immortal hulk here uh, no Midnight Suns, which would have probably been one of my picks had I had I been given full choice. So there's a lot of kind of just, you know, I, I'm i starved for choice in the affiliations that I want to play. I'm starved for choice in the characters within those affiliations. And then somehow I have to pick three. And it just feels extremely restrictive. I, I don't think list building for this format, like, I think it'll be very, very interesting. But I think it's going to feel frustrating. And I think it's going to lead to some some kind of feels bads right at list creation where you're you're building your list and you're going to have situations where you're not really happy with any of the lists that you've built. You're not looking forward to play those lists. And yeah, I mean, I'm also realizing now that the screen recorder has frozen me at the end of the cards here, which is really interesting. I don't know how long it's been like that. Okay, I don't know how long it's been like that, but thankfully it looks like it happened um, at the bottom of the restricted cards list. So I'll probably throw an edit or something over the video here, just saying that the, the video stopped going at this point. Uh, I'll check the audio, make sure it's okay as well. But um, thankfully we're nearing the end of the video, and, and if we got to that point, then we got through all the important stuff that you guys needed to be able to see. So that's good. Um, but... Yeah, I think this is a little heavy-handed. I think, I, I, while I agree with restricting list building and, and forcing people to make interesting choices and unique lists, I think that's great. Um, I think they went a little too far with it. I think there's, you know, locking entire affiliations out of the game. I could understand some of the smaller ones. Like, 
if you know sentinels was a problem in the meta which they definitely aren't but if sentinels was something you were seeing everywhere then i can understand saying you know sentinels is too small of an affiliation so we'll just take the entire affiliation out rather than ban a couple key pieces but something like guardians of the galaxy for example like i think guardians of the galaxy you could still leave in the game and take out some of the more problematic models that they have i think that would have been totally reasonable um and I think that's probably true for a lot of these affiliations. So it's just, it's interesting how, how far into the, they decided to go. I, I personally, I'm not excited about this format. I think this format had a lot of potential and I, I think they missed the mark a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I, I don't really know what more to say about it than that. Thankfully for me, I don't go to these types of events. I'm not I'm not someone who who has played in the in the the events that are the scale that would be seeing the, these restrictions very much, so this doesn't really affect me right now. But it is something I would have been interested in going to in the future. And now, that's kind of you know I'll I'll look at it and be okay. I'm still interested in going to these, but maybe I'm not going to these events to play in the main thing anymore, right? Like. If this was something that was coming into standard, like if they started enforcing this this timeline in standard games and I needed to use this in all of those local tournaments that I go to, I don't know if I care to go to very many local events anymore. Um, I think it's just a little too restrictive and that's that's really unfortunate because I I really like the idea of forcing people to bring different lists and forcing people to, to not just rely on these super meta choices but it just felt like they went a little too hard with it um especially with some of the leaders that got cut out i mean cabal only having one leader avengers only having one leader those both look really rough to me um criminal syndicate they included claw which feels like a bit of a joke um but like i think there's i, I mean shield not having access to fury senior is or rather fury junior is absolutely huge um so yeah, there's just a few of those cases as well where it's just it feels a little bad that those characters weren't included. Amazing Spider-Man, I mean, he's finally good. People are excited to run this model again, and I don't think he's breaking anything. But I do understand that for kind of the thematics of it, they can only have one Peter Parker, so they went with the new one. But yeah, it just feels like there was a lot of choices here made that I don't necessarily agree with. So I don't know. Um, I, I don't have crazy, crazy strong uh you know like i i don't despise this I, i'm i'm i'd be willing to try it if uh if the opportunity arose for me to go to one of those types of events that would have this but it just felt like a weird weirdly restrictive choice in a game that kind of thrives off of the the freedom of choice it gives you with, with splashing and things like that so i don't know it, it it's a bit of a mixed message i think it's overall a a cool idea still i i like a lot of the things that have been implemented here i just think they probably pushed a few too many of them at once but um yeah i think that's going to be it for for my rambling especially since i realized that the video isn't going anymore so i don't want to i, I don't want to ramble on too much and and all that but i hope you guys who are still watching this video enjoyed if you did please do drop a like down below and subscribe if you're new let me know what you guys think of this format. Is this something you at all care about? Is, is this a, is this a format that you know you you feel like you're going to be playing or you want to play in the future, um, and you know you're you're either for or against it, or would you rather just kind of use the the normal list building and things like that? Uh, let me know. I'm I'm curious to see what everybody thinks about it. Overall, I I think my local scene is relatively negative or just very indifferent about it, whether or not they're planning on going to these events but um yeah it's it's definitely something worth kind of having that discussion out there and also acknowledging you know if they're if they're willing to suddenly lock things down this tight for the major events you know is there a world where we start to see this for smaller events and i hope the answer is no i i think you know having having a slightly more expanded restricted or banned list would be okay for smaller events but i wouldn't want them to go this far this this feels very very extreme so we'll see. I'm I'm optimistic though still that the you know that won't be the case and this will be restricted to these major events. Um but yeah, let me know let me know down below what you guys think. I personally like like I said, I don't go to these scale events, so it doesn't really impact me personally, but I am curious to see 
how how you guys feel about it and i mean it is something i'd like to do in the future so we'll we'll see if maybe maybe down the line um if this would be something that that would actually stop me from going to one of those types of events and i think it might uh really depending on the circumstances and the meta at the time but if they if they stick to this format and they they stick to this level of restriction on the list it's it's really really gonna gonna influence whether how much i actually want to play those those scale events so we'll see but um that's that's for another day so yeah hopefully hopefully this video was informative for you guys and and you got what you needed out of it uh like i said i'll try to include a link in the video details to just kind of the uh you know the organized play page where you can you can get these documents yourself if you want to look over them but um yeah i think that's going to wrap up this video so until next time everybody have a great day peace